Hello Internet! Welcome back to, I guess, what we're turning into this uh, series of controlling a ship using only a single axis. Uh, so there's two more things that I want to do with this, and in this video specifically, we're going to use this to make it kind of follow things. Uh, so what we have right now is I can press any direction. Uh, it's easier actually on a controller, but you can kind of give it a direction and the ship kind of turns towards it using some dot product magic that we, we developed last video. And so one of the cool things you can do with that is all this is taking in is a direction. And so we can just get a direction towards an object and it will drive right towards that object. Even as that object moves around, it will figure out where that, that direction is and figure out how to turn and do all that other cool stuff. Assuming there's no walls in the way, uh, it will turn towards it and actually get to the point where it's right next to the object. So that that's sort of what we're going to be building in this video. Uh, I haven't really figured out how I want to do that. Uh, the easiest way is to just make a copy of this ship input controller. But I don't think I want to do that. I think the best way is to remove this update. And so the ship input controller then would just have a horizontal and vertical component, but they wouldn't be updated. So let's copy that. Delete it, save it, and create a ship input controller publisher. I, I, I'm making up the name as I go, but that, that'll work for what we need. Uh, and so we'll put those there. And so that's going to update a horizontal and vertical component. We don't care what that is at the moment because I want to store a private copy of the ship input controller. Call it the input controller, I guess. And input controller is going to be equal to a git component of type ship input controller. And so now that we have the ship input controller, the idea here is instead of just updating the objects, horizontal and vertical components, we're going to update the ship input controllers horizontal and vertical components. So all this is doing is just publishing things to that. And so that's pretty much it. And we should, if I, whoa, what the heck? If I did all this right, we should be able to attach that script and now we'll be right back where we started and everything should behave relatively normally. Uh, so I can put that there. There's no variables on that. It just goes there. And theoretically, if I start, I can still move around uh, and everything works. So the point of doing this is now our ship input controller is completely separate from the actual controller, which means that we can create a different type of ship input controller publisher and use that. Uh, effectively, we can swap this one, which is a manual controller input for like an AI or something like that. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to create a ship input controller publisher follower. This naming scheme is going to get very long <laughs> real, real fast. Um, I, I guess autocomplete will help us, but that is a very gross name for a path. All right. So we should be able to just copy this and paste it there. And the only other thing we need to add to this is a public, well, let's follow a transform, uh, followed object. And so the way this is gonna work, we're gonna give it a transform to follow around. So just a reference to, to some point to follow. And so that could be an object or whatever. And then as that moves around, this is going to continually update and give new values for this. So instead of doing input.getAccess, what we're going to do is get a difference equals our uh, followed object dot transform dot position. That's not right. <clears throat> we don't need to get the, the transform dot position. We just need the position. Why doesn't it like it when I do that? minus this transform dot position. What? 
What? No, I, I don't want the transforms transform. That doesn't make any sense. That's just itself. Um, anyway, uh, it's being weird. But I'm assuming it's right, even if the IntelliSense is very wrong. Uh, so we're getting the object we want to get to, subtracting our current position. That should get us a vector towards it, if I'm remembering my math right. And then we're going to normalize that. So that'll be the, the direction instead of the distance. And then we can just plug it that in. So the difference dot x and the difference dot z. Again, we're on the 3D space. Uh, so x z is the is the floor plane. And so that's sort of the space we're working in. Uh, it changes depending on where you're looking. But for me, I put I move the camera to the top. So that that's how that works. So we just need an object to follow at this point. Let's just make a cube question mark. Cool. So there's our, our cube and there's our spaceship. So let's take off this publisher thing and add the follower script. And then once we add the uh, cube to that, we should be able to start this and have our ship turn towards that cube. Like so. And now that it's, it's kind of found the cube, uh, Obviously, I don't think I have a collider on our ship, so let's add a sphere collider to that. And see what happens if I were to move this outside, so like move that over there. Why are we going through? That's... Oh! We're not actually checking physics. We're not using rigid bodies or anything, so physics is not going to be a factor in this. If there's walls, this will go right through it. Uh, we could change that so the movement controller actually updated a or applied force to a rigid body. That would work as well. Uh, but in this case, we're, we're not doing that yet. That might be something worth investigating though. But what we can do is just move the cube and it follows it around. Which is cool because it means like if you have an AI that you want to follow the player or something, it will work. This looks a little bit uh, glitchy. And the reason for that is it's running through the object and then going back and forth and back and forth and it's also moving quite fast. There's no acceleration here, so it, it's actually at full speed back and forth constantly. Uh, and so we're getting this little little jitter. But that's mostly because we took a shortcut and actually are just modifying the transform itself instead of applying force to something. So that's, that's that. It follows an object. Let's make this a little bit... Uh, nicer I guess it's just so we don't have to kind of deal with some of the manually moving it around let's make this follow like a cool sine wave pattern like a figure eight or something and so pattern mover question mark <laughs> this is probably gonna take more time than that did uh, so there's going to be a public float x period and y period I think and so those are going to what I'm thinking is we have a sine and a cosine wave on the x and the y axis and you can change the period of each of those and the amplitude of them and that will affect how this actually looks so public float x amplitude and the y amplitude gets us all of this and then from there we should be able to actually uh, just move the thing and so this transform dot position equals a new vector 3 of again xz plane so math f dot let's do sign for x of r uh, let's plug in time dot time so this is going to time dot time is a float of the total elapsed time in a scene uh, so it's not going to be like the delta time where it's a fraction every single frame it's just going to keep counting up uh, and so that's a handy way to just kind of get the time and we'll divide that by the period so if we want like a slower thing we can just increase the period so uh, time divided by two will we'll make it slower and then we can multiply that by the amplitude uh, so there we go zero for y and then copy and paste this 
put it there and put it on a new line because that was really hard to read. Put a cosine in instead of a sine, a y for the period and the amplitude, and that should be it. The reason we're using a cosine instead of sines for both of these is so that they'll meet. Other, uh, like you can get a circle with a sine and a cosine. If you just use sines, it, it will look kind of weird because they'll, they'll mirror each other. And so this hopefully offsets them enough so, that, so we get some cool patterns. I don't really know what it's going to look like, so uh, <laughs> we'll find out together, but that should be it. And the cool thing with this, we should be able to just leave the cube over there, and it should automatically jump to the, to the center because that's just how we have it set up. So pattern mover, two and four, four and two. So I want to do a figure eight. So I want the period on the X to be greater, right? So two and four, and then 20 and 10, question mark. <laughs> Just throwing in values to see what happens. The, the amplitude will measure the uh, size. <clears throat> it's a little bit a uh, little bit slow, but I think we are getting our nope. We're not getting our figure eight. <laughs> so we can we can keep changing these and it will update in real time because we're updating the actual position every single frame. Uh, so it's kind of doing an arc. It looks like that's not really what I wanted. <laughs> also, it's moving substantially slower than our actual ship. So our period is probably too slow, so we should increase it to like one and two. Faster. We must go faster. <coughs> so again, it's kind of it's bouncing back and forth, which isn't what I want. So let's there we go. <laughs> sort of sort of what we want. It not really, but we we can we could play with this more. I don't really want to. Uh, it just sort of a really quick, easy, dirty way to kind of test this, and kind of kind of show that it is it is following it. Uh, in case you were doubting me, also this is just really fun and cool. <laughs> so so that's that. I'll leave that there. Uh, and and yeah, that's pretty much it for, for what I wanted to get done in this video. The next one I want to do is have it so you can actually follow based on the mouse. We had it working with the controller. But with a mouse, it's a little bit different because you kind of want to move to some point and have it go there. Uh, and, and so we need to figure out a way to actually calculate this direction from the point of space in, uh, of the mouse. But how do we get the mouse into the screen and, and, and do all of that? Uh, so we'll do that in the next video. And then maybe add rigid body stuff as well because that seems like something that would be nice. Because collisions, you kind of want that, unless you're just wide open in space. You kind of want to use collisions instead of modifying the transform. So we should probably do that as well. But those will be in the next video. So uh, until then, see you internet.